Okay, everybody, I just wanted to, to give an update on Yoannis Cespedes. First and foremost, uh, I'm glad to say and to hear that he is, he's healthy and he's safe. Uh, and we, we learned during the game today, late in the game, that, uh, that he's decided to opt out of the remainder of the season for COVID-related related reasons. Um, when we showed up to the ballpark this morning, uh, he was not here, he was not on site. We weren't, uh, we weren't aware of why. Uh, we were able to uh, send a security team to the to the hotel, um, and then ultimately learned later that he was that he was healthy. He was not in any danger, and then ultimately has made the decision to to opt out of the season. Um, so I wanted to wanted to give everybody that update. Happy to answer any questions, but uh, but that's where where we are with the status of Yoannis at this point. Hey Brody, did you have any inclination at all that this was something he was considering doing? We did not. So the first time that you were made aware of it was just when, when the agent called and that was towards the end of the game, you're saying? Correct. That was during the game. Correct. Okay, so just how, how much of a shock then has this entire day been from your point of view? Well, look, first off, you know, we, we support everybody's and every player's right to, to make this type of decision. And, you know, this is a challenging time for everyone. Uh, and so we will, we will support him in that decision. It was surprising without, without question. And, it, uh, at the same point, we, we have to go forward and we have to you know, not allow you know, anything to keep us from, from going forward and, and attempting to win every game and, and not have distractions from it. But again, the key takeaways from my end at this point are that, you know, glad that he's okay because there was some, a period of time where we weren't sure and glad uh, you know, I certainly will support him and respect his decision as he, uh, as he goes forward. And just to clarify, um, and you may have said this, but I just want to make sure we have this correct. When you guys put out the initial statement, um, you were unsure about his potential safety, and then learned something in you know the hour afterwards that that made you feel comfortable that that at a minimum he was safe. That's correct. Yeah, thanks, Brody. Were you given any indication that Cespedes is maybe displeasure uh, with his performance, or any extenuating factor uh, led to this decision? Yeah, look, as, as it relates to the decision, Mike, I, I, can't, uh, I can't make any comments beyond the fact that he made the decision to, to opt out for COVID-related related issues. I know from, you know, the entire team's performance, I, I know there's been frustration, but, you know, in conversations that Louis had with him, with Yo in particular, or, uh, you know, as it relates to performance or playing time, I know they have conversations all the time or had conversations regularly, no different than Louis has with all the players, but as it relates to the opt out of the, of the season and, uh, and his concerns over COVID, this was the first time we heard about it. Now, does he get paid for the rest of the season? How does that work? You know, under the, under the agreement, you know, from my understanding, the players that, uh, that opt out, you know, will, will do just that and, and not, uh, and not earn their salaries. Hi Brody, looking back on this whole stretch from when you negotiated Cespedes' contract years ago to this point with it, over how will you look back on that, that whole this whole episode it's disappointing you know i think it's disappointing you know for for the fans you know from from my vantage point you know prior to coming to this to this job and then and then since you know he was a great player that i think everyone enjoyed watching play when he was at his best there was optimism for for his return i know how hard he worked in his in his rehab to get back to this point and and I know this is a this is a disappointing disappointing end to at least his his four year agreement with with the Mets. But uh, you know, it, uh, I know it wasn't for a lack of work ethic on his part to try to get back. And where is he now? Did he go back home to Florida, or I'm not sure on his travel at this point. Okay. Thank you. Hey, hey, Brody, just wondering what what this does to your your roster at this point, and, and whether you have to talk to the team about a player leaving kind of under these circumstances this way. Yeah, from a roster standpoint, I think it's the same same mindset that we've taken all along. We've we've endured some injuries here to start the year, and it's a next man up mentality. We can't uh, we can't change that approach. We continue to make efforts to add depth to the organization, independent of this of this move. We we made made the trade prior to the game for Billy Hamilton, which was rooted in that same effort to try to continue to add depth to our 60 man pool. Um, and then as it relates to communication with the team, you know, I know Louis will, will continue to, to motivate these guys and to talk to them about how to reach their peak performance. You know, we, 
we haven't done that yet, but there will be uh, there will be no no quit or no wavering of what uh, of what we believe this team can do. But you know, we know we have to pull together. And at the time of that initial statement you guys sent out, how concerned were you about about his his safety and, and health at that moment? Yeah, at, at the at the time we sent out the first statement, it was really an attempt to to be uh, communicative in real time and transparent about about the situation. You know, he was not on site here here as it uh, as it led up to and to the start of the game time. We wanted to make sure that we were providing you all um, in real time information about about his absence, and then as soon as we learned that. Uh, that he was he was not in harm's way. Then we were, uh, you know, we wanted again make sure that everyone had information as we had it, and then now uh, giving you the you know, the the final decision on his part to to opt out. Thanks. Hey Brody, did he give you a reason why he didn't uh, tell you anything about it before you ultimately found out later this afternoon? I mean, did you have to get law enforcement involved? What went into that? Yeah, we did. We did send send security to his room at the hotel to to make sure uh, that he was okay. He was not at the hotel, and, and all of his belongings had uh, had been packed up and, and taken away. But uh, you know, anytime a player is not on site, you you want to make sure you check uh, check into it and make sure first and foremost that he's that he's okay. And uh, you know, obviously, as as we uh, as we pick up the pieces here now, it's a matter of going going forward. But you know, definitely, uh, we're not aware prior to the game or leading up to the game or until during the game that uh, that this was this was on on the horizon. Uh, and also contractually, this being the last year of his contract, is there any reason for you to remain communicative with him, or is this effectively end your team control over him? Oh, I think you know we'll always want to communicate communicate to players, and uh, you know as far as team control goes, you know he's got a contract through through the end of this year. From a transaction standpoint, we'll put him on on the restricted list. That will be uh, that'll be the actual transaction. But uh, but at this point, you know, no no player that leaves the organization would would I view as as uh, you know out of sight, out of mind. That you know, we care care for the man and hope uh, hope that he and his family stay safe. Thank you. Hey Brody, you mentioned uh, the team pulling together and the communication with them. But do you think something like this unexpected can be a distraction for a team? Oh, at any time, any time uh, you have surprises, it can be a distraction. Uh, you know, I think that right now. When, when our goal is to go out and try to win baseball games, we, we can't feel sorry for ourselves. We can't make excuses, and we just have to find a way to do better. And I think all of us you know, recognize that we haven't met expectations, but uh, you know, we just have to, keep, have to keep working. And as far as distractions go, I know, you know Louis's Louis, uh, ability to communicate with these guys is, is an important piece of that right now. And so I'm, I'm optimistic that these guys can, can uh, keep their focus and, and go out and try to, try to get back on track here. Hey Brody, um, I guess first, uh, how, how confident are you in your team's ability to complete the season successfully, and I guess most importantly, how can we? Bradford, one more time. How confident in what? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. How confident are you in your team's ability to complete the season both successfully and most importantly, healthily? Well, f first off, in terms of completing the season, you know, we show up every day with the intention to play, and we take every precaution, every measure that we can to try to be as responsible as as we possibly can to to give ourselves that chance. Uh, so, you know, I'm confident that we'll continue to do our part. I'm confident that we'll, uh, we'll continue to show up with, with the, uh, the approach that we're going to try to win, win and, and play every game. And that's, we won't stop doing that. Hey, Brody, uh, because it was after August 1st, he, he can't opt back in, correct? Suspicious now? Yeah, I, I don't know the, the specific, specific details of that, uh, David, at, at this point. Okay. Okay, but you're under the assumption that he, he couldn't opt back in the season, or how do you how do you look at it as far as being a player? I know you put him on the restricted list, but I'm just curious if he, if he could come back under some circumstances. Yeah, the, the communication to us is that he is he's opted out for the season, and so I, that's my assumption. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Hi, Brody. Uh, I'm curious from a procedural standpoint. Um, there's one reporter in Atlanta today. Uh, there was really no reason that anybody would know about this until you found a conclusion. Why did you guys put out these kind of half measured uh, explanations until you knew exactly what was going on? Yeah, I don't think it was as much half measured, you know, Mike, as, as much as it was wanting to be transparent and providing information at real time. So I, I know that there's, uh, you know, both in terms of integrity to the other, to the other side, integrity to, to all of you is to, is to try to make sure as we get information, we give it to the best, uh, the best way possible. And uh, we wanted to make sure that any concerns is, as the day went on, were 
were, uh, were alleviated once we found out the good news that he was okay. Hey, Brody, kind of following up on Vax's question, do you maybe think twice about the wording and the language that you did use in the initial statement after seeing the reaction that you did get from the public after? You know what, I honestly, Disha, did not see the reaction from the public. I, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that we communicated that, uh, that he was not here on site, because I know we would have gotten those questions from you after the game. So I wanted to make sure you had that in, in real time. And then we also wanted to make sure and provide additional, additional information that, uh, that gave everyone peace of mind that he was okay. And then now obviously I'm here sharing the, uh, you know, the news that he's opting out. So there was no, no, uh, no hidden agenda, no, uh, no attempt to mislead by any stretch of the imagination is, is providing information as we, as we have. Brody, was there any kind of discussion last night uh, with Cespedes about uh, uh, financial arrangements and uh, incentives that might not be reached that might have uh, upset him? No, I mean, I, I know that uh, Louis had conversations with him over the last couple of days. I had conversations with him over the last couple of days to, to reassure him that um, our job was to try to put the best team on the field every day and that Louis had the had the power and the authority to try to do that with the lineup. You know, obviously, Yo, I think, started eight of the nine games that we played prior to today. And, uh, you know, so he was, he was certainly being given every opportunity to help us, help us perform. And, you know, I've said publicly and, and to him directly that when Jonas Suspicus is at his best, he can help us. So you got no sense he was upset about uh, uh, contract incentives? No, no sense beyond just what I share with you, Mike. Brody, I think when, when the statement went out, there had been reaction like it could have been something pretty dangerous that had happened with, with uh, Cespedes. Obviously not the case later on, but I mean, is there any part of you that would rethink sending that or was that set in a moment where, you know, I guess in a way you probably sounded more mad because at that point you had no idea why he wasn't at the park. So was it a reaction to just being angry that he wasn't at the park and it was unexplained? Again, no, no reaction at all in anger or any other hidden agenda other than just to provide the information in real time as we had it. Uh, you know, baseball has suffered some tragedies in the past, and, and you want to make sure that, uh, that those don't repeat themselves. So both in terms of making sure that we, uh, you know, everyone was aware that he was not here and try to find out the reasons why as quickly and as fast as possible. We would reached out to him. We reached out to the agent. You know, ultimately, we did hear back from the agent, and we... Uh, we immediately sent security over the hotel to make sure we could, you know, have our uh, have our concerns alleviated to a degree, and and uh, and share that with you as as we have. And that wasn't upsetting to you, Brody, that he hadn't directly reached out to you to let you know, hey, I'm not coming to the park or any of that. Well, and any time a player doesn't doesn't show up, there's you know there's questions and concerns. Now, you know, as far as anger or the you know the situation that Louis was put in or the teammates were put in. You know, I think that first and foremost, it was about making sure he was okay. And then now we have a lot better understanding that, uh, that he had a you know, decision that just hadn't been communicated to us yet. Hey, Brody, what's your overall message to the fans right now uh, with the Cespedes news and uh, the struggling start one-fifth into the season? We have to be better. You know, I don't think there's any, any way to sugarcoat that. You know, we have expectations that we have, have not met. Uh, we haven't come come close to meeting yet. And we, we want to be a better team than what we've shown these first, first 10 games. And it's a short season and we don't have the luxury of figuring it out over, over the first couple of months of the year. You know, we have to, we have to get it going. And every one of these games counts, they're magnified. And especially when we're playing in the division, we've got to do a better job of, of winning ball games.